Hello all, welcome to the microwave and radar engineering lecture 5 on single star matching. At the end of this lecture, you will be able to explain the concept of single star matching, discuss the steps to determine the value of length and the distance of star, and solve the problems of single star matching using Smith chart. The prerequisite for this lecture is the knowledge of Smith chart, impedance and admittances. So let us first discuss impedance matching. As we all are aware that impedance matching is done to transfer maximum power from the input to the output or to simply make our characteristic impedance Z0 equal to ZR. So to make that, we will make use of a stub which is noted over here with the red color. Stub is nothing but a part of a transmission line and this stub is short circuited at the one end so we will call it as short circuited stub. Now due to the introduction of this short circuited stub, the impedance of this stub Thus, the impedance provided by this part, which is the combination of the load impedance plus the transmission line or a part of transmission line, the combined parallel impedance of these two must be equal to my characteristic impedance. So, I have named this impedance at this point as ZA. So, my target over here is to find the to make the value of ZA equal to Z0. So, to make that, we have two design parameters. One is the distance that is at what point we should introduce this stub. So this distance is calculated from the load and named here as T stub. And second is the length of the stub, which is noted here as L of stub. Now, as I said that we are going to calculate the parallel impedances or the parallel combined impedance of this stub plus this part of the transmission line. So it is easy for me to calculate the values in admittances in place of the impedances. So I have renamed here my characteristic impedance as characteristic admittance y0 za will be written as ya and my impedance zr will be now represented in the form of yr now as i said that ya should be equal to y0 and y is nothing but the sum of the admittances provided by the short circuit stub plus this part of transmission line along with the load admittance now as we know that Z0 is only consisting of the real value. There is no imaginary term in the Z0. It means the Y0 must again consist of only the real terms. And I want my YA to be equal to Y0. It means Y should also again consist of only the real term. But YA is the combination of these two. So for, let us first evaluate these two. If you look into the admittance provided by this stub, which is a short circuit stub, and we know the impedance of this short circuit stub is J Z0 tangent of eta L. So it means the admittance provided by this must be an imaginary term. So I have renamed it as J times B of stub. Secondly, this Y of D stub is the admittance provided by this one. And I want the combination of these two must be equal to Y0. It means this admittance or this Y of D stub must consist of some real term which is equal to Y0 and an imaginary term that must be equal in amplitude to the Y of stub but opposite in sign. It means the B of stub must be equal to minus B of D stub so that when I will add these two values, these two will be cancelled out and I will be left with only the Y0. Then only my condition of YA will be equal to Y0. So to achieve that, I will take the position in the transmission line in such a way that while I'm moving from the load towards the source at some distance D of stub, I will achieve the real part equal to Y0. So this is my first thing that I want to do. Secondly, after achieving this point or at the point where my real part of this admittance is equal to Y0, over there I will introduce a stub which is a short circuit stub such that the impedance and the length of this stub should be in such a way that the impedance or the admittance, not the impedance, the admittance provided by this stub must be equal to the negative of the admittance provided by this D of stub or simply the J B stub of this transmission line or this stub must be equal to minus J times B of D stub that is the imaginary part or imaginary term of this admittance Y D stub. So now to obtain that we will make use of the Smith chart. So there are the few steps to determine the value of D stub and the L of stub. So first one is to find the normalized load impedance and determine the corresponding location of the chart. So we know in the Smith chart, we only deal with the normalized value. So we can easily find the value of the load impedance or the normalized load impedance on the Smith chart. 
second we will draw the circle of constant magnitude of the reflection coefficient for the given node so it is also feasible for us to draw the circle of constant magnitude of reflection coefficient tau and third one is determine the normalized load admittance on the chart so this is obtained by simply rotating r value by 180 degree so we will see these steps in the next slide so as i said that we will first draw the load impedance so this is my load impedance zr i have drawn it a point on the trans on the my smith chart for example over here then this zr is as i said is nothing but my normalized so it is zr divided by z not second we will draw the constant reflection coefficient circle or simply the vswr circle so by taking the center at 1 0 and extending my arc up to the load impedance point i will draw a circle and that circle is the constant reflection coefficient circle or the vswr circle third i will draw the normalized value of the admittance by simply rotating this or taking the opposite diametric point on this vswr circle of this zr i will get the value of yr we have discussed all these things in my previous lecture of smith chart so you can kindly go through them if you are not able to catch these things so now next steps are is to move the load admittance towards the generator by riding on the constant vswr circle or reflection coefficient circle until it intersected with the unitary normalized conductance circle it means to make my real part in the y of d stub should be equal to y naught we have to move in such a way that we will reach up to the unit circle so you can see here that right now i am at this position this is this is what we have obtained in my previous slide so now i have to move in such a way that i will reach to the unitary circle so this is my unitary circle unitary conductance circle so this is done by moving in the clockwise direction so i will move here in the clockwise direction in such a way that i will reach to this point or this unitary circle and you can see here that on the vswr circle this point is this one similarly if we further move or further do a rotation then we will reach to another point over here which is also cutting my unitary circle or which is the intersection of my vswr circle or the reflection coefficient circle with the unitary circle so it means there are two solutions for it first solution is this one which is shown over here in this slide so what i will do i will take here only the first solution i will discuss the second solution later so by considering the first solution i can read this point on the smith chart and this point is nothing but the admittance of d stop because we have seen earlier in my previous lecture that to obtain any point on the transmission line we simply move on the vswr circle if we have to move towards the source we will move in the clockwise direction if we have to move towards the generate towards the load then we will move in the anti clockwise direction direction so yr is my load so i will definitely move it here in the clockwise direction because i am moving towards the source and i have obtained to a unit circle or my vswr circle is cutting uh, this unitary circle at this point so i will obtain this point where my admittance is equal to 1 so this is the case over here which is denoted here by the value 1 plus gb so i will read this point and this is what I have assumed equal to 1 plus AB. Similarly, if I have moved further, then I would have reached to the second solution that is this point. So you can also read this point. This point is equal to 1 minus G of B. So you can see that these two are the possible solutions. You can take any one of them. I will continue my lecture with the first solution only. Now we have obtained the value of Y of D stub equal to 1 plus AB. So uh, let me make you clear over here that why I am focusing here on 1 instead of y naught because here we are taking the normalized values and normalized values divided by y naught. So if I would have taken here the value of y naught then it by dividing it with the y naught I would definitely get the value equal to 1. So this is the value of 1 that I am trying to get in the case of the y of d stuff. Similarly the total value of y a over here I want equal to 1 so that my it will be equal to my characteristic impedance because again the y of a in the case of smith chart is the normalized value so my target over here is to find the value of the y of stub equal to some imaginary value which is equal to minus of jb so that this will be cancelled out with that 
So for the first solution, the value that I want for the y of stub equal to minus a b, and this will be achieved for a particular value of the length of the stub. So let us see how we will obtain it. As we know that this is the short circuit terminal for the case of the admittance. As I said to you in the earlier class that this is the point of z maxima. It means in the case of admittance it is y minima. And the short circuit case started from y minima. So this is the point where my short circuit stub will start. So the stub which you have attached with the main transmission line or a short circuit stub will start from here and this admittance or this value of admittance which I have want will determine the length which I will introduce in that. So I want an admittance equal to minus of jb. Why minus jb? Because I want to cancel this plus jb. So I want this minus jb. So to have this minus jb, I want a length L of stub. So this L of stub will be determined through the way, through the Smith chart. I will obtain the value of minus jb. For example, if the value of b over here is 2, so I will get here minus 2 circle. So this is my minus 2 circle. So and the real part of this is 0. It means this is the outermost uh, reactance resistance circle. Over here, the value of R is 0. So this will be my point. So it means to move from this point to the this point, I will have some value of length and that will be calculated in terms of lambda. So L will come out to be equal to X times of lambda. You can read from the outer scale the value of lambda and that will be the value of the L of stub. Now similarly for the second option or the second solution which was 1 minus of gb the second uh, y of stub must be equal to plus of gb this is the second solution uh, don't confuse it with the first solution so the value that I want for the second solution is the plus of gb with the zero real value so what I will do again it is a short circuit stub so I will start from here and I will move in the clockwise direction and I will move up to that point where the value of plus jb will be 0 plus jb will be made so 0 plus jb is the 0 resistance circle and plus jb circle so this is the point so i will move from here to here up to this point and i will read the value of lambda for this whole path and that value of lambda is nothing but my length of the stub so the same thing i have done through a numerical this is a problem for you for example, if my normalized load impedance over here is 0.4 minus of j.4, then I have to find the value of L1 and L2. So L1 and L2 is nothing but the distance of the stub and L2 is the length of the stub. So what are the various steps? I am telling you over here step by step. So first step is to draw the unit circle. So I will draw a unit circle. You can see this is my unit circle. I have drawn this unit circle over here. Why I have drawn the unit circle? You are all now aware of it because I want my Ya to be equal to 1. Why equal to 1? Because here in the Smith chart I am taking the normalized value. So in the practical thing it will be equal to Ya. But why not? But in the Smith chart it will be equal to 1. Second is I will plot the value of Zl. Or it is simply the normalized value. So it will be 0.4 minus J.4. So you can easily plot it over here. When you will see the point for resistance circle, this is my point for resistance circle and the point for impedance circle. So there are two point for impedance circle. One is in the below of the center line and one is above the center line. So over here it is minus of J4. So it is below the center line. So this is that circle minus of 0.4. So it is cutting my point for resistance circle at this point. So this is my ZL. So I named it ZL equal to 0.4 minus of J.4. Now to obtain the admittance circle, what I will do, I will draw a VSW circle by the center at this point and the arc at this point and I will rotate it. So this is this will give me the value of my VSW circle. And now next point is to plot the value of YL. So how I will plot the value of YL? It is simply the diametric opposite point of ZL on the VSWR circle. Let me change the color of the pen. So if I look, this is my ZL, then definitely this is the diametric opposite point named here as YL. And I can read it from the scales of the Smith chart. It is equal to 1.25 plus G of 1.25. Now, 
from this point i need to move in the clockwise direction such that the value of admittance will be some real values and some imaginary value but the real value should be equal to 1 it means this when i will move in the clockwise direction on this vsw circle the point it is cutting on the unit circle will be my points of the solution will be my solutions so next is to measure the length sorry second next is draw an arc with center at 1 0 and radius equal to y l and move in the clockwise direction and move from that is moving from load to source where the arc cuts my unit circle that is my y1 so as i have moved on the vswr circle and i am going in the clockwise direction i will cut at this point my unit circle this is it means this y1 is my first solution and definitely i am cutting this unit circle again moving in the clockwise direction or continue my moving in the clockwise direction at this point so this is my second solution y2 i will take the case only here of y1 so i will read the value of y1 and it is equal to 1 minus j of 1.15 so over here i achieve the real part equal to 1 but i don't want this part imaginary part because if i remove this part then only my impedance matching will be possible so how i will remove it so i will going to remove it with the help of the short circuit stuff but for what should be the length of the short circuit stuff that is important so to calculate the value of y2 that is my uh, calculate the value of y2 that is the admittance provided by this length of this stuff i will make its value in such a way that it will cancel out exactly the value of the imaginary part provided by my l1 so if you look here the value of l1 uh, y1 is 1 minus g of 1.15 so i want my length of the stuff in such a way that its value is equal to plus g of 1.15 so to obtain the value of 0 plus j plus j of 1.15 i will move from the y minima case as it is the case of y maxima so definitely the y minima will be there and when i will move from here in such a way that i will reach to 0 plus j 1.15 so this is that point 0 plus j of 1.15 in order to over here y with the value y2 so i will move from here and i will move in the clockwise direction and i will reach up to here so the length will be determined here in terms of the lambda we can read the lambda scale and it will come out to be equal to 0.386 lambda so this is the length of my stub and the distance of the stub over here is given by the rotation that i have done from the value of y l to the y2 so this rotation will give me the value of my l1 that is equal to 0 0.153 lambda whereas l2 is from the short circuit value that is the y minimum value from this point to the point of plus j of 1.5 that is equal to 0.386 so this is how we will solve the value we solve the problems of the single stub in through the smith chart so at the end of this lecture we are now able to explain the concept of single stub matching we have discussed the steps to determine the value of length and the distance of the stub and we have successfully solved the problem of single stub matching using Smith chart. So thank you.